What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got a really exciting overview slash review of this little knife right here. This is the Hogue HK Exemplar. Really, really cool knife. I have a lot to say about it. We'll get into it in just a second here. I uh, wanted to kind of point out what's coming up. Um, I've got a battle. I haven't done a battle in a long time, so there's a video coming Saturday uh, that'll pit two knives against each other, so I'm really excited about that. And I've also got another video uh, coming Saturday. It's not going to be a top five video, as a lot of you are, are you know, kind of accustomed to um, as far as my channel goes. Um, I did a, a video based on what, what knife would I keep if I could only choose one, and I've got a lot of knives in my possession right now. I mean a lot. Um, so that video is really fun. It's done. It'll it'll come up on uh, Saturday. There's already people on Instagram guessing. You're welcome to follow me on Instagram if you want to throw your guess in, if, in the comment section, I guess, if you want to. But anyways, that's what's coming this weekend. So if you're not subscribed to my channel and that sounds interesting to you and you like knives and you like the idea of a channel that uploads at least five times a week, this might be the channel for you. We do lots of uh, fun stuff here. Unboxings, battles, as I mentioned, top five stuff. Um, weird stuff on a weekend sometime. I've got my, uh, my quest for the perfect folding knife series that I do on Sundays, which by the way, episode five is coming on Sunday. Um, I like to kind of mess around with sharpening. I'm still learning there. And of course I have knife reviews and knife overviews. So like I said, if all that sounds fun to you, then please subscribe to my channel. I think you'll really enjoy it. Anyways, let's go ahead and take some measurements here on this exemplar. Overall length on this guy Coming in at a surprising 7.75-7.8 inches overall. It's not quite 8 inches. How about the blade length? From tip to scale, we're looking at eh, like 3.3 inches overall. It's not quite 3.5. Blade length is going to be just shy. It's going to be like 3.1, 3.2 inches. Not quite 3 and a quarter there. There's a not quite a finger choil up front. It's a it's a very generous or very large sharpening choil. I'll kind of point point out what I mean there. Uh, let's go ahead and do some size comparisons here. Up against the Ontario Rat Model One, Rat One coming in at eight point six inches overall. How about up against the Spyderco PM Two? PM Two coming in at eight point three inches overall. How about up against the uh, Rick Hinder XM Eighteen? XM18 coming in at 8.25 inches overall. How about up against another Hogue? I like to say Benchmade Reptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Uh, up against the Ritter Hogue, that's an interesting size comparison there. Uh, the Ritter Hogue is 8 inches overall. So this um, the exemplar is very close in size to um, the Ritter Hogue. Spoiler alert, this is what the battle is going to be. Those two up against each other. I think that'll be really fun. I think people will be excited to see that. Uh, how about the, um, Delica, the Delica coming in at seven inches. So, you know, a lot of you guys are already thinking this, you're thinking, huh, you know, I'm, this is what I'm hoping. I'm hoping you guys are like, I've never heard of this knife. What is this? Well, it's made by Hogue, you know, Hogue's got access, obviously access to this uh, lock now that uh, it's been freed up, uh, legally. Um, they call it the Able lock now. It's right around that sweet spot. A lot of people's sweet spot is seven and a half to eight inches. Um, it's really close in size to the really popular Ritter Hogue RSK MK1 G2. Um, I love saying that. I've said it so many times in my head. I can just I can just fly through it now. Um, I'm hoping you guys are intrigued and you're interested, definitely, because this is an interesting knife. Let's go ahead and weigh it. Let me give you a, an example of this action. If you watch me unbox this, you already know. Look at this. Oh, that is what an axis lock should look like. And I'll go ahead and, you know, ruin the part where I talk about fit and finish. There's no blade play in this guy up, down, left, or right. That's just how good that is. Oh, that is just so satisfying. Those of you who have bought multiple Benchmade 940s, you know, like the ones that you get and you go, you pull that and it just doesn't do that. It's just grindy. Uh, and then, you know, for whatever reason, no reason at all, you get a, you get a Benchmade 940 that, that does that, how good that feels. That's how this feels. Oh, just, just awesome. Here, I'll do the reverse flick. So easy to manipulate there. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and weigh it. Bring the scale out there. There we go. Overall weight on this guy coming in at 4.37 ounces. Let's go again. 4.34 ounces. So 
a little over four and a quarter. A lot of you are going to go, oh, darn it. That's too heavy for me. It's got to be under four ounces. Stick around and watch the review. I, you know, I, I always try to sway people from thinking like that. And I know I've been talking a lot. We're not talking about the knife. We're five minutes in. Um, free up your mind in terms of, you know, what, what's an acceptable weight. You know, is, is 0 0.25, 0 0.37 ounces in this case really going to dissuade you from a knife? Um, I hope I can... I hope I can say enough good things about this knife to, um, to persuade you to give it a shot. Um, I don't want to ruin the review, but there's a lot to love here. Um, so this is a USA made knife offered from Hogue in uh, collaboration with HK, uh, Heckler and, oh boy, I should probably have looked up the pronunciation. We have last names like this in this town. They pronounce them Cook, Heckler and Cook, Heckler and Cooch, Heckler and, uh, who knows. I'm sure you guys all <laughs> pronounce that differently. I'm sure there's a specific way to pronounce that. Uh, but, uh, you know, they used to be a line with Benchmade. Kind of like how Bird Knives was to Spyderco. HK or H&K uh, was, was that way to Benchmade, I, I guess, kind of. It's no, no, longer, um, no longer the case. Um, but uh, in this, anyways, what they've, what they've created here is a knife called the Exemplar. And this knife comes in three forms, at least. The forms that I have seen are this form right here in front of you, which is G10 and CPM 154. Hallelujah. I love that steel. Uh, it also comes in flat dark earth on the scales and uh, black coated CPM 154 or uh, all black. And... Um, uh, this base form that you're seeing right here, $127 on Blade HQ. The black coated versions, both both with the uh, brown G10 and black G10, run about $144, which is insanely reasonably priced. Um, I I'm so happy to finally have an American-made knife uh, on my table that's a reasonable price that functions well. And again, I know I'm spoiling this, but I mean, look back at my videos. How long has it been that I had a, an in a nice you know, reasonably priced American-made knife that I, I you know, I, I just love. It's been a while, so I'm really, really excited about this. Let's talk about the anatomy here. What we have is a harpoon-shaped blade, uh, a really nice, you know, a little bit over three inches, stonewashed harpoon-shaped blade. You can see there, they didn't go crazy with the, um, with the uh, uh, billboarding. It just says Hogue USA on one side. And on this side, it says HK. I would have preferred it was back here. I'm not sure why they put it in the middle. It's not, I don't really care though. You know, it's like just, uh, it, it's like, it's it's kind of obnoxious, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, nice stone washing on here. I'll give a nice close up here. Looks like uh, Rick Hinder's old Gen 4 stone washing on the XM18s. His new stone washing is a little bit more reflective. You can see here, uh, more of a, um, uh, more of a grainy stone wash. This has more of the deep scratches. I actually prefer the deeper scratches. It looks nice and it's going to hide wear and tear a little bit better. Uh, the the cutting edge is symmetrical, ground really well on both sides, nice and sharp. This knife was provided to me directly by the manufacturer, more specifically the pass around group. I'm not the very per first person to have handled it, but it looks like everybody kind of kept it in good shape. Um, so just wanted to kind of disclose that there. Um, the harpoon grind on this was done very, very well. Ergonomically, there's a nice place to rest your thumb up there, and it does actually keep your thumb in place. Really happy about that. We've got a little raise here, a little thumb ramp. That's also nice as far as placing your, your thumb uh, in a braced position while cutting. You have this spot up here that, you know, it's meant to be a, an, an enlarged uh, sharpening choil. You can... If you really want to test it, you, you can choke your finger up there, but it does put you in a position where, you know, if you're not careful, you're going to, you're definitely going to run your finger up on the blade. You know, uh, just the, the angle here, since this isn't cut as a half circle to meet up with the sharpening choil, it doesn't quite create the security that I'm looking for in a full choil. Let's give this example. This is a full choil where you're safe. You're not going to run your finger up on that blade. Uh, here, excuse me, I have to decline that real quick. Everybody likes to call and text me while I'm doing videos. Here, what we've got um, is, like I said, just an angle. So you can do it, just, you know, be cognizant of that. Uh, moving down to the scales, what we've got here is G10 that's smooth up top. You have a typical button head uh, Torx pivot. You've got the Able Lock, which is just perfect. There's no stickiness in here. I mean, this is just nice. It's the same 
feeling that I get when I use the one on the uh, the Ritter Hogue. Um, no stickiness. It just functions exactly right. It doesn't feel all wiggly and loose and weird and, you know, it's it's what I want every Benchmade to be in terms of how the uh, how the lock feels. I want it to feel like this. I have two examples from Hogue, my first and only two examples from Hogue, and they've both been perfect. I love that. That's what I want from Benchmade. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited that that's the case there. Uh, moving down to the scales, you know, you've got this nice little scallop here, this cutout that allows you to access that thumb stud oh so perfectly. We'll talk about deployment, but that's just, uh, that's in exactly the right place. Then you have these weird, they're like stickers almost. They're like texturing stickers. I don't know. It looks like, uh, looks like bananas and peas <laughs> up close. I don't understand what's going on there. Um, that's fine. It, it definitely does offer some traction, but it's not. Somebody asked me in the comment section. They said, "Is the type type of traction that wears uh wears out your pants?" Given that the pocket clip is resting right on top of it, uh, no, it's not that aggressive. I would call it just barely medium. I mean, it's not even as aggressive as like the peel ply texturing on a PM2 or a Manix 2. Um, it's there, but it's definitely not going to tear your pants up. Anybody who's worried about that. We've got the Torx head uh, body screws down here. Are they the same size? No, they are bigger than the little tiny size that everybody hates, or at least me. I'm trying to get everybody to jump on board with me and get rid of those permanently. Um, but uh, these are a larger size, which means it should be a little bit easier to adjust these with your, um, with your Torx heads. Um, I'm going to be honest about these things. I would have just preferred that the G10 be textured. Um, I don't... You know, it's not like the, this bothers me. It's just, just texture the G10. You know, why do we have to put stickers on there? It's just kind of weird. I'm not sure I like visually the texture pattern. It's a little bit odd, but it does do its job. No big deal. Looking inside here, um, I need to see it actually in my light. What we have is a 50% cartridge liner. Let's see if we can see it from this side. You can see some re reflectivity in where that line ends. The cartridge liner ends about where that standoff is that you can see inside of there. And then the rest of this is solid G10. I imagine that's for some weight reduction considering it, it's still managed to be four and a half ounces. Uh, moving over to, actually let's look at the back here. It just seams up. This is fine. It doesn't look bad. Um, I would have preferred that maybe there be standoffs or a backspacer. I think standoffs always looks a little bit better and better yet. A backspacer, I don't have an example on the table. Um, but, uh, this is fine. It works. Um, it, I, it just increases the thickness of the G10 and adds just as much integrity as, uh, um, standoffs or a backspacer would. So that's okay. It just, I don't know. It kind of looks to me, it looks a little bit unfinished. There's a little bit of a gap there you can see right through, but I mean, the fit and finish on this is, is really good. As far as like how well it meets up, how symmetrical it is, it's perfect. It doesn't look bad at all. There's no issues there whatsoever. It's not the same as like the Benchmade Griptilian scales, the plastic ones, how they, they meet up, but they look like they were just stamped and pressed. Now there's care went into this, so that's fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, uh, moving uh, up here, you can see there is jimping on um, both the cartridge liners and on the uh, G10 scales, and it extends up to the thumb ramp. It's much the same as, as the Benchmade Griptilian or the Ritter Hug. You can also see here that the exemplar is actually a little bit thicker in the handle, uh, but the blade thickness is about exactly the same. Um, we're going to talk more about that when we do the battle between those two um, uh, knives. Uh, the Axis Lock or the Able Lock in this case is unbelievably easy to manipulate. It is so smooth. Um, it's actually just a tad smoother than my... Um, my Ritter Hogue, if I'm being perfectly honest, I'm going to open this up just a little bit so we can get a little more light in here. We got some clouds and things today. Um, it's, it's unbelievably smooth. This thing runs on phosphor bronze washers, and it has to be the smoothest example of phosphor bronze that I have ever felt. There is no friction in this blade whatsoever. It is so easy to fire out and whip back into place, and it's nice. You know, a knife that's shorter that's smaller than my preferred carry size the ergonomics are just fantastic um i can get my whole hand around this i'm not forced into you know i've got a little bit of maneuverability as far as like 
or a little bit of room to move my hand around on that uh, on that handle, you know, depending on where exactly I want to hold it. I'm not forced in any, any position, which is nice. And then you've got two different places for your thumb to rest, depending on what type of cut you're making. Um, this blade has a flat that carries out about 70% the length of the blade. Um, blade thickness, probably 125, 130 thousandths. It definitely has some reinforcement down to the tip. I'm not worried about that tip breaking. Um, this is a nice, you know, it's kind of a medium sized work knife. You know, it's got nice handles that fill out your hand. The weight's not too crazy on it at four and a quarter ounces. The blade isn't gigantic, but it's not small either, but it definitely is the type of blade that you could use to go outside and go to work with. Absolutely. Uh, and I also trust the strength of these style of locks. To, you know, despite there being the issue with Omega Springs having the potential to break, you're going to be less likely to have that happen if you properly lubricate everything, take things apart and clean them. Now, Hogue's warranty, I don't know if they allow you to do that. That might be a problem. Um, I mentioned that when I talked about the uh, Ritter RSK MK1 G2. I wasn't 100% sure if um, you, you know, are allowed to take these things apart. I don't know. I hope you are. Um, if not, you know, make sure that you get a little bit of uh, lubrication inside this uh, this mechanism here every now and then, just so that those um, you know those Omega Springs are, are nicely watered. Um, you've got thumb studs that are in a shape that it, it's just you know it, it's exactly right for catching your thumb. As far as deploying this goes, there's no awkward feeling. You know, I talk about the awkward feeling that I get when I use the thumb studs on the XM18. You'd think it'd be about the same, but it's actually, it's an odd angle. You kind of have to push it out here and you have to move your fingers away from the frame. You have to be cognizant of a lot of things to deploy that correctly. Not on this. You just, you just go, you just fire it. There's, there's no messing around. It's going to deploy. You know, you can use the uh, able lock to kind of whip it out there if you want to. And once it's locked out, there's no blade play up, down, left to right. That's so refreshing. I love that. That's, that's really, really great. Let's talk about this gigantic honking pocket clip. I think somebody asked me um, to measure or compare um, with the pocket clip on the Doug Ritter. So the screws are definitely spaced further apart. I'll take a measurement here. Somebody, I'm pretty sure this is the question somebody asked me. We wanted to see how far apart those screws were. Let's start on the one inch mark. It looks like they're half an inch apart. Um, whereas on the Ritter, which I think is modular with most Benchmade clips. Uh, we'll put it on the we'll put the screw on the one inch mark again. Uh, they're not quite half an inch apart. They're like three quarters of an inch, or, or I'm sorry, <laughs> three quarters of a half inch apart. I'm combining fractions. That doesn't make any sense. They're not the same though. So this pocket clip, um, some people are gonna like it and some people are not. It doesn't look like it's gonna be modular with those, um, you know, what's what's massively available. Uh, on the secondary market, they're not going to be modular with, um, you know, those ProTech and Benchmade and uh, Les George clips that are all over the place. Uh, Emerson, you know, things like that. I assume that the clip on the on the Ritter Hogue is is like one of those, but I don't think it's the it's that case with the exemplar. I don't mind this clip. It definitely does its job. It is. Definitely easy to get in and out of the pocket. I'm doing this off camera, so it's not going to benefit you guys a whole lot, but this is really easy to get in and out of my pocket. Despite those screws sticking up just a little bit, it doesn't really seem to notice it. The retention is definitely there, and man, is it easy to draw. This just molds so perfectly to my fingers as I'm pulling it. Now, I think it's kind of overkill. In fact, I'm not really sure why they put such a massive clip on that thing. It doesn't, I got to be perfectly honest, it does not create a hotspot. I'm sure a lot of you are thinking that's that's got to be a hotspot. It's not, honestly, there's no hotspot here. Um, but it's just too, it's too big. I'm um, why, why, you know, they could have done that or something real similar to that. And it would have been just fine. You know, to basically a typical bench made deep carry pocket clip looking pocket clip would have been perfectly fine. This is, this is also okay though, because again, it carries deep enough. Um, it does its job. It's just unnecessarily large. You know, I, it's not often on my channel I find myself saying, why is the pocket clip, it's, the pocket clip is too big, but it's not a problem. It's either too big and it is a problem or it's too small and it's not, a, and it is a problem, I guess, either way, uh, for, for, you know, another reason beyond just the size. But 
this pocket clip's fine. I don't have anything else to complain about there. Initially, I thought this uh, knife was off-centered, but it is centered. Um, so that's nice. You've got a lanyard hole back here that you can squeeze some 550 through if you really need to. Um, but, you know, that's pretty much it, guys. This is an awesome, awesome knife. If I were going to change anything about it, make what is basically trying to be a finger choil. Just go ahead and make that into a... Uh, uh, an actual choil if you're going to do it or bring the blade back enough to where nobody within their right mind would try to put their finger in there and just add a little bit more cutting edge you know kind of pick a pick a side i guess um and uh, i'm not a huge fan of these they look like stickers um sitting on top of the g10 maybe add some texturing or just leave it smooth because i think the ergonomics is really going to lock this um the, the ergonomics of this knife really gonna are going to lock your hand in just fine i don't know that it's 100 percent necessary this is a fantastic knife. The best part about it is the price, $127. Now, a lot of people in the comment section are like, eh, you know, if they change the steel to S30V, I bet. Listen, CPM154 is my absolute favorite user steel. I, I constantly am saying on my channel, why don't we see more CPM154? CPM154 is so awesome. This is awesome. They put CPM154 on this knife. This is a user knife. This is 100% a knife that is meant to be taken out and used. It's right in there with, you know, my feelings for like um, the PM2 and the Manix 2 are priced, you know, between $100 and $140. They're USA made. They're purpose built. You know, it's right in there, but you have this CPM 154 steel that is just easier for, for people like me who aren't like, you know, really, really practiced in sharpening. Um, it's a steel that holds an edge long enough for me to be happy with it. It's stainless enough that I'm happy with it. It's tough enough that I'm happy with it, but it's easy to sharpen. I love CPM 154. It's a fantastic choice for this knife. I love the blade shape. I love the ergonomics. I love the manipulation of this. I love the way that it's built. It feels solid. It feels like a knife that gives me that feeling of like, yeah, I can take this out and use it. And it's not going to take up a whole lot of space in my pocket. You know, it's a little fat this way, but that's about it. This is an amazing knife. And um, Hogue is uh, one to watch, especially now that they have this Able Lock. My prediction is that Hogue is going to turn into what Benchmade should be or what people expect Benchmade to be. Hogue is going to do their own things with their own uh, designs, and people already like them, but they're able to get their tolerances correct. Their quality control is great. Their uh, Able Lock feels better than your typical Axis Lock. Um, and it feels a little bit more substantial too. I don't know if other reviewers are echoing me, but this looks a little better. It feels a little bit meatier. The spring feels better, but it also feels smoother and there's no stick. I have a feeling Hogue is going to be what Benchmade should be. And it's going to, hopefully it's going to force Benchmade to step up their game. Um, because, uh, uh, you know, now that Hogue has these two in their lineup, whew, man, in my book, yeah, I'm going to pay attention to Hogue. Absolutely. Hogue release is something I want to look at it. Absolutely. Really, really excited about this knife. Definitely check it out. It's absolutely going to go on my playlist of my most recommended knives that have ever come through my hands on this channel. So check that uh, check that playlist out if you haven't. But that's going to be pretty much it for today, guys. I know we ran uh, kind of long here, but I had a lot to say about this knife. Sorry about the lighting. It's just cloudy, then not cloudy, you know, back and forth. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, then please subscribe to my channel because there is definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody. And I hope you all have a great rest of the day.